A few months ago, Iran launched the biggest airborne missile and drone attack in world history against Israel. And we, the United States, had Israel stand down. What should have been the response? We're going to ask General Michael Flynn what he would have done. On October 7th, we know what happened. And subsequent to then, Israel started hitting back. And after Israel took out some Hezbollah leaders in Lebanon that were trained by Iran, that were probably Iranian uh, Hezbollah commanders, Israel got hit with the largest airborne missile attack in world history. And the United States said, stand down. And Israel gave a pinprick response. That's all a pinprick response, which I don't think intimidated anybody other than maybe somebody around said, oh, Israel could have done a lot worse. We're glad they didn't. If you were national security advisor, what would your policy have been after that Iranian attack in regards to Israel and in regards to the United States action? Yeah, I think one 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 easy phone call, you know, if it were my counterpart, the national security advisor, so to say, so to speak, it's Israel. You do what you need to do to survive because this is about survival. This isn't about winning anymore. This is not about winning against the Hezbollah or Iran or, or Hamas. And it's not about Bibi Netanyahu's survival as a political person. This is about survival of the state of Israel. And I want the Israeli people to know it. I want, I want the people, I want the Jews in this country, in the United States, I want the Jews in Europe. I want anybody that believes in the state of Israel as the only democracy in this cauldron of 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 just horrific horrific action and activity that they live it they, they they live in and i've spent many too many years actually uh in this in that part of the world fighting against this same type of enemy this is about the survival of the state of israel not the survival of israel israel will always be there jerusalem will always be there but the government, the state of Israel, as it, as it is today, as it functions today, that people can say what they want about my comments, but that's what I believe because they're, the, the, growing, the growing opposition to Israel's actions, not to Hamas's actions, they don't care. If the people that are protesting in Europe, the people that are protesting in this country, they don't know where the river is and they don't know where the sea is. All they care about is that Israel, you're done, okay? So, you know, that's what I mean when I say Israel, this is about survival, you know, it, and I do think that, you know, they have, you mentioned a couple of names, Gantz and, and, uh, and Netanyahu. Um, th there's some strong, strong, tested, experienced leaders leading Israel right now. And the best thing for Israel to do is not allow the propaganda to disunify their efforts. The Israeli leadership right now must unify uh, behind themselves and behind their own objectives to to uh, remain as a you know as a beacon of light in the in the in the darkness of the Middle East. Um, in order for that to continue to to occur, now uh, they're going to have to fight for their survival, and that means to me that means destroying these these uh, these these i these ideologies, right? I mean Hamas, destroy these organizations, destroy Hezbollah, and you know. And, and from my perspective as a, as a military guy, I mean, how we can help them there, I'm okay, because we still have American hostages yet, you know, being held hostage. They took Americans and abused the crap out of Americans, okay? People that do that need to pay a consequence. Organizations that do that need to pay a consequence. We should not be giving these organizations, Palestinian Liberation Organization, we shouldn't be building bridges or ports you know, on their coastline, we shouldn't be giving them a dime, not a dime. Instead, we should be helping Israel to survive as a state because frankly, and, and, I, and I'll get all kinds of help for saying, for saying what I just said, because there's so many people that are like, well, we, gotta, we can't have war, the Jews, this, the, that Zionists, all this crap, bullshit. We are in a place right now where if they don't survive, the Middle East will be reborn as, a, as an extremely, extremely radicalized, worse than we can ever imagine, radicalized Islamic regime, empire, empire, like the Ottoman Empire. And we cannot uh, afford that right now. The world can't afford that. 
The United States can't afford this right now. We can't afford it. And, uh, and, and it's going to cause us, it's going to cause us significant problems. And I'm not talking about 10 years from now. I'm talking about like, like a few weeks from now, a few months from now, if we don't get this, if we don't get our act together and uh, never mind the, the global economic shift that's about to occur under our feet before we even have another election. God help me people. I mean, I'm not asking, I'm pleading. I'm pleading people to get involved in this country. You know, if you believe in America and you believe the way in the American idea, you know, where it's, you know, sort of justice for all, one nation under God, you better do something about it and use whatever God-given skills, whatever God-given common sense you have and get involved in your communities. Now, last point, and I'll use this as an indicator. Nationally, the primaries, we're, we're, the U.S. is going through its primaries right now. Nationwide, our, our voter turnout is less than 35%. South Carolina, a very red state, right? I mean, talking about colors, right? Very, very uh, Republican-led state. South Carolina just had their primaries last Tuesday. 13.5% turnout. 13% turnout, voter turnout for the GOP primary. So I feel like I'm barking up a, a, a you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. I, I'm, I'm going around this country telling people, local action, get involved, get out and vote, register, you know, all these things. And South Carolina has a 13.5% voter turnout for the GOP. That tells me that the GOP is pathetic in South Carolina. That tells me that people, maybe, maybe the American people and maybe the South Carolinians are exhausted, but, you know, suck it up, folks, because people have given their lives for us to be able to have that privilege. People have lost their lives, too many people, too many people and people that I know, never mind the, the millions over the course of our history that have given us the privilege to breathe free air and to be able to have privileges like voting. So let's get out there and exercise that. God help us if we have less than, if we have 60 or 65% in the general election, we're, we're not gonna have, we're not gonna have a country if we don't get Donald Trump back into office, I'm sorry. With everything that they're trying to do to destroy that man, I've been through that. They are beatable. They are beatable. Their arrogance will be their downfall. We can win this and we will.